rather than naming particular masajid in London, <coughs> the place that I know to be a masjid which is upon Salafiya purely and clearly, that has strong links with the Salafi ulama, and they follow the, the methodology of the Salaf of Salih, is the, is the masjid in Cranford, masjid of Sunnah. And then there are organizations, they may not have masajid, and they may not have marakis even, but they organize events, such as, for example, our brothers at the uh, at Maktabatul Athariya in East London. In East London, there is an organization, Al Athariya, and they are our good Salafi brothers. Likewise, our brothers in uh, Northwest London, in Harrow, our brothers at Darul Iman. Likewise, various <coughs> other brothers around London, such as the brothers in Wembley, and so on. The details you'll have to speak to London people, people are not the most knowledgeable about London locations, but they're the ones that come to mind straight away. Allah As for other than that, from the mosque that have been mentioning these questions, then no, I don't recommend any other masjid except for that one. As for the rest of the masjid, we can go and pray there, as long as they don't commit bid'a mukaffara, as long as they don't commit shirk and kufr. You can pray there, but as for taking knowledge, then no. No masjid except for that one. I don't know any other masjid that stick to the ulama and are, and are upon ilm, and they are, are clearly upon the sunnah, with regard to the positions against the people of deviation and innovation, except for that one. Allah Allah. You mentioned jihad, protests, demonstrations are not from the way of the Quran. So no, jihad is from the Quran. So no. Mention all throughout the Quran. As for protests and demonstrations, then no. They are not from the way of the Quran. So no. But the intention behind such actions is to implement change proactively. So other than dua and improving one's self, how does one attempt to change the situation of the Muslim Ummah who are suffering, e.g. Gaza, Iraq, Afghanistan? What should the Muslim Ummah actively do to help brothers and sisters in need? Then, jihad is something which is present. It is something which is done. But not the type of jihad that is being done in Iraq today. That's insurgency. There is, a, there is a government in Iraq. You may not love it, you may not like it, but it's the government. And as tyrannical as it is, or if you may seem, you may say it is, or you may think it is, or we may be, maybe even believe into thinking that it is, it is still a government that it is not permissible to fight against. As for obviously, if you are attacked in your home, whether you live in Iraq or Afghanistan or any other place, then you have a right to defend yourself. As for protests and demonstrations, you're talking about some, you know, what do we do proactively? Then to change the situation other than dua. Dua, my brothers and sisters, is from the greatest doors of bringing khair to yourself. If only you knew what the dua can do. The dua, ya ikhwan, can destroy nations. The dua of Nuh alayhi salam for his people. And look what he did to the people of Nuh. Drowned them. Look what the dua can do, ya ikhwan. Look when the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam made dua at Badr. 300 companions, over 900 mushrikeen. No weapons, or very few weapons, small means, not really well trained, yet they overcame the mushrikeen, the idol worshippers, at the first battle after the migration. And look what he did. It is mentioned that before the battle began, he raised his arms high, seeking the reward from Allah and aid from Allah. So much so that he could see the whites of his armpits. What else can you do? You can write. No harm in writing to the scholars. No harm in writing to the Muslim rulers. Politely, nicely, making dua for them in the letter. Because this is the Sunnah, Imam al-Bukhari. You all know Imam al-Bukhari, the great Alim of the Deen. He mentions ijma, consensus without exception, that the methodology of the early people, of the early scholars without exception, was to make dua and supplicate for the Muslim ruler. So you begin your letter by supplicating for him and reminding him of his duty to Allah. You polite, you ask him, and you've done your duty. Now focus upon yourself. You want to send money to them? Send money to them. Medicine, institution, so on. Maybe even if you write to the ruler to better their affair, whatever means that you have at your disposal. <coughs> o ruler of such and such a land, please help those Muslims. No harm in that. But as for you demonstrating in the streets, then you say that our intention behind such action is to implement change. Intention is not sufficient for, for ibadah. There were some people in the time of Abdullah bin Mas'ud after the death of the Prophet sallallahu but they were in the masjid counting pebbles. One of them would pick up a pebble and say, Subhanallah. The people around him would repeat in chorus, Subhanallah. He would do that a hundred times. Then someone else would pick up a pebble, then he would pick up a pebble and say, Alhamdulillah. The people around him would repeat, Alhamdulillah. They would do that a hundred times with the pebbles. And then they would start again with Allahu Akbar. 
So when Abdullah bin Mas'ud, he said, what are you doing? He said, what are you doing? Indeed, he said, how, how quickly, O oh, Ummah of Muhammad, you have run to your destruction. What were they doing? Glorifying Allah, praising Allah, mentioning the greatness of Allah. That's all they were doing in their eyes. He said, how quickly you run to your destruction. Look at their understanding. This is why I say, ulama, scholars, the one who has knowledge is not like the one who does not have knowledge. He said, indeed, the clothes of the Messenger of Allah are still being worn. His utensils and his crockery has not yet broken. And his companions are widespread. Either you are upon a religion better than the religion of Muhammad, or you are upon a deviated path. What did they say to him in response? What was their deviation? Their deviation was not the actual dhikr, because the dhikr and the remembrance of Allah is mashru, it's legislated. SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, throughout the day this is legislated. You can say it at any time. So generally speaking, you can say it at any time. So this is, Allah. So this is something that is legislated. What was their deviation? <coughs> the counting of the stones, using, making dhikr by the count, and which some people now do. You know, I remember in the, some of the mosques we used to visit in the 1990s, they invented these counters, like click, one, subhanAllah. Click, two, subhanAllah. Click, three, subhanAllah. So, wow, someone's actually invented this thing. So they can make dhikr. So a few months later, I was getting onto an airplane, and I saw the air hostess. As the people look at, she had the sound, so she making liquor. <laughs> but she always, woman, you know, English woman, making, you making liquor. She was counting the passengers onto the airplane. I thought, which one? Who learnt of who? Did they have it? And some Muslims saw, saw her counting and thought, you know what, I'm going to get some of these in for the mosque. <laughs> or was it the other way around? This happened. So they, they were using this, me- this type of counting with machines or with dhikr, what they call dhikr beads, which are rosary beads. This is not from the Sharia of Allah, it's an innovation. So Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, this is why he spoke against them. And what was their answer? They said, we only intended good. That's what they answered to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the companion. What was the companion's response? He said, how many people intend good, but they never reach it. So your intention of doing good is not sufficient. An intention must be backed up with mutabaha, with following the tradition <coughs> and the path of the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So no. We don't go into demonstrations. And demonstrations, by and large, are rowdy, and they don't bring about any good. And likewise, it is imitation of the kuffar. You're using their methods for rectification. Our rectification is in the book and the sunnah. This is where our rectification lies. So write to them. Okay, you can write to them. You can send money to them, to the people who are suffering. You can write to the Muslim ruler. You can make dua for them. And what do you want? That's all you can do. That's what, oh, that, that is all you can do. You can't do anything else. Strapping yourself with semtex and sitting on a tube isn't going to solve the problem. Rather, that, may even, that will land you in the hellfire. Prophet ﷺ said that whoever kills himself in the dunya by way of poison or by jumping off a mountain or with a knife, then he will continually do so in the hellfire. Likewise, the statement of Allah in the Quran, لا تقتلوا أنفسكم إن الله كان بكم رحيما Do not kill your own self, for indeed Allah has been with you most merciful. So you're not allowed to kill yourselves in this manner. It's not correct, it is not acceptable, it's a major sin. Suicide bombings and these types of affairs are not from the deen of Islam. These are from the methods of the kamikazes in Japan. Second World War. You know, when all else fails, let's fly the airplane into an American, you know, uh, warship. That's what they used to do, it's from them. They have Tamil tigers in Sri Lanka and so on. It's not from the method of Islam or rectification, nor jihad. Never mind that you walk onto a bus or a train and, the, and that you kill women and children. That's not even shuja'a. It's not even courageous, it's not even brave. Killing women and children, where's the bravery of that? Every kafir, every non-Muslim that sees that, he looks at you like a coward. What kind of coward is this? You don't want to fight man to man, you want to fight children and kill women and children? People who are non-combatants, this is manhood? <coughs> Muslims are supposed to be known for their rajula, for their manhood. Strength of cur- courage and bravery, this is bravery. That's what, that's what uh, Fudayl ibn Iyad, or, or, uh, yeah, Fudayl ibn Iyad said, who died in, uh, from the scholars of the early generations, said about Abdullah ibn Mubarak from the first century, died in the year 181. When Abdullah ibn Mubarak, rahimahullah, used to make dua to Allah for the rectification of rulers, he said, what? This is true bravery. What a brave, this is bravery. This is bravery. Bravery is not jumping on a bus or a train and blowing yourself up. Whether it be in Tel Aviv, whether it be in Baghdad, or whether it be in London. This is not bravery. 